Hi there, I'm Jessica Rose. Welcome to this video on lifestyle photography for your jewelry business. Now I'm a huge fan of lifestyle photography. Not only is it so fun to do and make little scenes and set up, but also it's great to do to share on your social media, on your Instagram page, Pinterest, and of course on your website and anywhere else you put your images. So when you print them out for your flyers or business cards and for behind your stall at market and craft events. So they're really nice for putting your jewelry into some context and helping customers see how it can fit in with their lifestyle. So not only is it great for your brand, but it's also a lot of fun to do. So we're gonna be talking about some top tips for getting your lifestyle photography underway today. So first of all, I like to use props for my lifestyle photography. Now we don't wanna go mad with props, but it is a nice idea to explore some different ones. Have a think about your brand colors, what things fit well with your jewelry, and also scale. So some props that I like are cups, books, wrapping paper, ribbon. I'm gonna show you some examples a little bit later on in the video. Consider scale and focus with your props. So if you're going to be doing flat lays, for example, which are images from a bird's eye view, you want all of your items to be able to be seen from that view with a nice focus. Also, if you've got props in the background, they're likely to be out of focus. But this is quite nice because we get the jewelry at the front, nice sharp image, and then a fuzzy cup, book, whatever it is you've chosen in the background, which gives a nice look and feel to your jewelry. Have a think again about not just your brand colors, but also the style of your brand. Is it quite rustic and natural? Are you gonna be using wood? seashells, things from nature in the environment, leaves, bits and pieces like that? Or do you have a very light, airy feel? Is it a lot of bright pieces? We want to make sure that your photography fits in well with everything else to do with your jewelry and your brand and your website. So it can be a tall order, but once you get it right, it can look gorgeous and add wonders for your brand. So once we've got some props together, I like to look at backgrounds as well. Photo boards is one of my favorite backgrounds to use, which are boards that have all different textures, patterns, designs on, that are made for this exact purpose. I'm gonna show you some examples of those in a little bit as well. As well as that, you can use wrapping paper or a natural background like some wood or leaves or anything else that fits in with your brand. I've even seen people photograph their jewelry on the beach or in front of a nice scene. Of course, it does distract a little bit from the jewelry, but it can be nice for your lifestyle images. Generally speaking, in your jewelry business, you're going to have some product images which are just the jewelry on its own. It's important we have those so our customers can understand exactly what the jewelry is like. Next up, I like to show some lifestyle images. These can have a little bit more in the frame. Then I like to show images of jewelry on a model. So these are the three main ones that I like to look at. I really enjoy setting up flat lay images. And if you haven't looked at flat lays, do have a look and see if it's something you'd like to do for your brand. They are massive on Instagram right now. And all it essentially is, is a bird's eye view of a scene. Let's look at some of the photo basics. So we've got our photo boards or our nice background. We've got our lovely props. Of course, we've got our jewelry. But getting the basics of photography are going to be key as well. Light, light, light. It's always about light. Um, so make sure you have plenty of light if you're doing it in a studio setup. I always say you can't have too many lights, which probably is technically not true, but it's the way it feels with jewelry photography is you want to give lots of light onto your pieces. Daylight is also a really beautiful light for jewelry photography, especially if you have gemstones and natural pieces that the light can shine through. There's something about daylight which just looks so beautiful. So if you have pieces of jewelry like that, I would encourage you to do some of your shoots outdoors. Try to get a light tent or something similar to diffuse the light. 
So an, a common setup is a light tent in the middle with a light either side and one on the top to give a nice round light to your scene and the light tent makes it diffused, which means it's not gonna create any harsh shadows. We also want to make sure we've got all the basics covered, get to know our camera, set our focus right so that we've got really nice sharp images, set our exposure right, and if you can, shoot on manual. It always gives you more control for getting a really good focus. We also want to make sure we've set our white balance, which is to make sure that the images aren't too warm, so like a yellowy feel, or too cool, like a cold, bluey feel. Setting the white balance right can make a huge difference to the look and feel of your images. And whilst you can edit it in post-production, it looks so much better if you can get it done correct straight away. So what's the process of doing your lifestyle photography? Well, first of all, you set up the props in your light tent. Then I like to experiment. So often I'll have a bunch of props, but I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with them, what jewelry is going to fit with what. So I take my first piece of jewellery or collection, lay them down in the light tent with my photo boards and just have a play around. Then get your camera out and start experimenting. Don't put too much pressure on getting the perfect shot. The main thing is just to get some shots. Sometimes how they look in the camera is different to how they're going to look on screen. And the more you do this, I know that everyone knows this, but practice makes perfect. So if I haven't done any lifestyle photography for ages and I do set up a shoot, I'm normally not that happy with the first one. But the second one is way better. I'm also often not ever completely happy with my photography, but it's about getting rid of that perfectionist mindset and just going for it. You can do a little bit of editing afterwards and you'll have some beautiful images that you can share across your networks. Get to know your camera if you don't already. It's worth having a look on YouTube and seeing if you can find some tutorial videos on how to use your exact camera. This can be really helpful for setting the focus, the exposure, your aperture, and all the other elements that you need to get the right light into your photography. Just a little word on props. Whilst I love them and it's great to have them, try not to overdo it. <laughs> you can get carried away with 20 different props in your image and you're looking for where the jewellery is. The focus always has to be the jewellery with these product shots. So keep that in mind whilst you're setting them up. Another thing that I love lifestyle photography for is themed shots. So when it's coming up to Christmas themed shots, Summer, I might have more of a summery look and Valentine's, whatever the season is, you can do a nice shot around festivals and events. And if you pop into your local supermarket, they're probably gonna have some props that are relating to that particular season. I like to batch create with my photography. So I don't create one image and then wait till the next day, create another one. I'll do a photo shoot where I'll have between 20 and 50 images that I can edit and use. This is great because if you're posting daily on Instagram or social media, it means you can get a whole month's worth in one go. It's also nice for creating shots of your collection and you can update and refresh your website with these relevant new images. Consider the crop when you're doing lifestyle photography. So have a think about where you're going to be using these online. You might want to do one crop, which is a long, thin one for a banner on your website. You might want to do squares for Instagram. And then you might have a different shape for Etsy and your products. So try and have a think before you start shooting where you're going to be placing your images and what kind of crops you need to account for. Sometimes I'll do a shot that's a bit further back knowing that I'm going to need to crop it in order to include it in all of the different areas that I want to. If this sounds a bit confusing, don't worry, just go ahead and give it a try. You'll soon learn what crops you need to look out for. Have fun with your lifestyle photography. It is such a fun part of running a jewellery business. And whilst it can be frustrating when we're first starting out and we're learning everything, once you get confident in it, it's a lovely part of the mix. So I'm going to go ahead now and show you some of the props that I use to create a lifestyle shot. So first of all, looking at the background, I've got some photo boards here with me. 
and you can get an idea of the different styles. So we had a marble one, this one's like a wooden kind of greeny effect. Again, think about your brand and how it fits in. I love this one because I use a lot of pink and gray in my work. So this is a really nice photo board for me. But there are so many. If you have a Google for them online, you'll get an idea of which ones you can use. And the great thing about them is they're light, they're easy to use, easy to carry, and they create a really nice backdrop for your jewelry. Now, some other things I like to use are in this little pot, you can see some pot puree. And there are all different types of things in these. You can often find them in your local supermarket as well. And around Christmas, they have Christmassy themed ones and all sorts. So in here, I've got a shell, I've got flour, I've got various other natural bits and pieces. And if I scatter them around on my photo board, that's gonna give a nice effect to surround my jewelry with. Again, keeping it all on brand colors. Then I love ribbon. <laughs> ribbon is great for lifestyle photography. So I've got some quite natural colored ribbon here because again, these are the tones that I'm working with. But I've also got a whole collection of other bits of ribbon that are pink and blue and green. And that can really bring out the colors in your jewelry. Another thing that's quite nice to work with are mugs. <laughs> um, so finding a nice on brand mug and these are nice for hanging your earrings off of and being able to drape things over so that's nice for a sort of side shot and then I really like coasters coasters are my new thing <laughs> because they're nice and flat and quite small so a lot of lifestyle things are quite big and chunky if you think of a vase or a book or whatever and your jewelry can get a bit lost on it but a coaster is nice because it's small. You can easily put it in the middle of a photo board and it gives a pop of color and I can put my jewelry onto that. And of course, you know, easily affordable, easy to get hold of from the supermarket as well. So do go prop shopping. <laughs> Try and find some nice on-brand pieces and have a go with your lifestyle photography. So here are some examples of what you can do with your props in lifestyle photography. Thank you so much for joining me on this video today. I really hope you have fun and enjoy your lifestyle photography. Keep at it, it's one of those things, the more you do it, the easier it becomes and it's wonderful for your brand and presence online. Now, if you would like to develop your jewelry photography in general, then we have an exciting new course for you. It's all about how to photograph your jewelry. It covers lifestyle photography, photographing your jewelry on a model, and photographing your jewelry on a white background for your product images. So there's lots of information in there. We also cover how to use your camera to get the best out of it. Lighting, props, everything you need to create professional jewelry photography for your business. Now, if you'd like to join us, click on the link below to find out more about the course and enroll today. You'll get 24-7 lifetime access, so you can come back to the course anytime you like. Thanks again for joining me on this video. I'd love to connect with you on social media at Jewelers Academy on Instagram and all the other platforms. I look forward to seeing you on another video very soon. Alrighty, bye for now.